بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة وسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back to another episode with stories from the Quran. Uh, today, inshallah, I will be speaking about a really special story, which is the story of the Baqara, the story of the cow. The longest surah in the Quran, Surah Al Baqarah, is named after this story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these stories again and again in the Quran. Why? Why are these stories mentioned in the Quran? Allah mentions to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, That you know these stories that we mention again and again from the stories of the Anbiya alayhi salatu salam or the people before is for one particular reason. Nuthabbitu bihi fuadak so that we make your heart firm. So this is why you will see that often the story of Musa salam, is mentioned in one place, then it's mentioned again, then it's mentioned again. Why? Because throughout the life of the message of Allah salam, <coughs> he would encounter difficulty. Difficulty with the Quraysh, sometimes the difficulty with people even around him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the story of Musa salam. You think you are having it difficult with Quraysh? Look what Musa had to deal with Fir'aun. You think sometimes things around you are, 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 are very difficult. Look at what Musa had to deal with, with his own people. How disobedient his own followers were after they had seen all the miracles. So today I want to speak about the Surah Al-Baqarah or the story of the Baqarah. The reason is that there's great lessons in it for the believers. Let me go through the background. The background of this is that there was a very rich person from the Bani Israel who was killed. Not only was he killed, his body was taken and it was planted near some enemy house. The next morning his family wake up and they're looking for him, frantically they can't find him. And they find his body next to a house of one of the enemies. So naturally, they come to the conclusion that these were the people who killed him. So they begin to fight. A man from amongst them said, look, we have Musa والسلام, amongst them. He said, Nabi, why are you fighting? Just go and ask him and he will possibly tell you who killed your uncle. So this is what they do. They come to Musa والسلام, and they tell Musa والسلام, the story. So Musa والسلام, says, okay. I tell you what to do. What you need to do is that you need to slaughter a cow. He says, as Allah mentions in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْبٍ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَعْمُرُكُمْ أَن تَزْبَهُ بَقَرَةً Musa says that Allah is commanding you that you slaughter a cow. They replied to that because they found it very strange. قَالُوا أَتَّتَّخِذُنَا هُزَوَى are you making mockery of us? I seek refuge in Allah that I joke regarding the matters of the deen. I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I become from the people, the jahileen, the ignorant people. Now firstly, these were people who believed that Musa والسلام, was a Nabi. So the logical conclusion should have been that they should have said, okay, Musa is a Nabi, therefore whatever he has commanded us must be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But no, they came to the conclusion that Musa was having a joke and laugh with them and was mocking them. Therefore they became adamant. Now when a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealed to a true believer, he accepts it because he knows that Allah is Hakim. Allah is the all wise. And we cannot fathom things like because we are limited in our understanding. For instance, you tell a three year old child, eat with your right hand. That child cannot understand why the parent is telling the child to eat with his right hand. When the child grows up, then it realizes this was the reason. 
We have an, a person who lives in the desert, Bedouin, never seen surgery. He walk, walks into a theater. And what does he see? He sees a surgeon cutting somebody's stomach up. He will come to the conclusion that this surgeon is harming the patient. Although the doctor is actually removing the harm from the patient. But his understanding will be limited to his own comprehension. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not limited. We are limited. So the conclusion they should have come to was, okay, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us because he is his Nabi, therefore we accept it. That's what a believer should be like. A believer, when a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, he accepts it because that's what his faith and his iman tells him. So they say, oh Musa, you having, you, you joking with us, you mocking us. The word huzwa, actually, and istihza, actually it has a particular meaning. It has the meaning of joking with somebody in a condescending way. In a condescending way. Meaning that you are looking down upon that person. Therefore, a person can joke, mizah. There's no problem with that. We have people joking. We have examples of the Prophet ﷺ joking. We have the Sahaba joking. But what is not permitted is this way. You joke to a person and you joke with that person in a condescending manner. So now, what happens? Is now that Bani Israel want to get awkward with Musa ﷺ. So they say, okay, Musa... We want some more information. Just a baqarah isn't enough. We want some more information. They said, قَالُدُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُبَيِّ لَنَا مَا هِيَ They say, Oh Musa, ask your Lord to explain to, to us what kind of baqarah it is. Musa alayhi salatu salam replied, قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنْهَا بَقَرَةٌ لَا فَارِضٌ وَلَا بِكْرٌ أَوَانُ بَيْنَ ذَلِكْ فَافْعَلُ مَا تُؤْمَرُونَ he replies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is a cow, la faridun, that it is not too old, wa la bikrun, not too young, a wanu bayna thalik, a moderate age. Fafalu ma tu'marun. Now just do what you have been commanded to do. Now the word faridun comes from the word faradat sinnaha, which also means that she has reached the end of her age. And the word bikrun, also means a virgin woman, means that she is in her early age. That's why the Arabs say Bukra. Bukra to Nahar means the beginning of the day. So not too old, not too young, a one bayna dhalik, somewhere in moderate age. Now, fafalu ma tu'maru. Now just do what you've been commanded to do. You know, one of the Khalif, he wrote a letter to one of his generals and he said to his general, go to a particular place and destroy the homes and destroy the trees. So the general wrote back to him, he said, well, what do we start with? Do we start with the trees or do we start with the houses? The Khalif wrote back, he said, if I tell you to start with the trees, you will ask me what tree shall I start with? The, the command is this, simple. Listen, this is what you've been commanded to do and that is just slaughter a a cow and finish but that, that's not enough for these people they want to now know more and more and more and really you know there's a great lesson for us in this why because sometimes you see Muslims also getting bogged down with subsidiary and peripheral issues and the most fundamental issues are put aside the, the burning issues of the time we don't deal with but we want to deal with those things which are very peripheral. Let me give you one example which we all go through is Salah. So you see so many Muslims debating on issues of peripheral issues regarding Salah. Where to put the hands, you know, uh, should your feet be joined, should they not be joined. Whilst these are important, nowhere do we see as much emphasis put on khushu in Salah. Concentration and devotion is Salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mu'minun, when He defines a believer, the first condition is what? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِ That 
successful are the believers who when they pray the salah, they are khashi'oon, they are devoted, they have concentration in the salah. So we get bogged down with the peripheral issues and we leave the most fundamental issue. The other thing I want to really look at regarding this verse is they say to Musa, oh Musa, ask your Lord. Subhanallah. You know, this was the disrespect that Bani Israel would show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah had saved these people from the clutches of Fir'aun, took them out, emancipated them from bondage. And what do they turn around? They say to Musa, they don't say, oh Musa, ask our Lord. They say, oh Musa, ask your Lord. And if you look throughout the Quran, it's a jeep. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave preference to these people. He says, Oh Bani Israel, we gave you preference upon the whole of humanity. We sent you Anbiya. We did this for you and we did this for you. The more Allah did for them, the more arrogant they became. The best example I can give of these people is really a spoiled child. You know a spoiled child? Yeah, some children, mashallah, you do f more for them. They appreciate them. There are some children who have a sense of entitlement. The more you do for them, the more arrogant they get, the more rebellious they get, the more entitled they feel. This was exactly by Bani Israel. You look throughout the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, go into the Ard al Muqaddasa, go into the holy land and fight. That land is destined for you. They said, no, no, no. There's a tyrannical group of people in there. We're not going to go. They said, Musa, we'll give you a mashwara. You go. You go. فَذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا هَا هُنَا قَائِدٌ نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ They said, oh Musa, we're never going to go to that place, but I will give you a mashwara. You and your Lord go and fight, and we're sitting right here. We ain't moving an inch. Subhanallah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from Fir'aun. Fir'aun is just drowned. They've just seen Fir'aun drowned. They've seen the miracle. They go past a group of people. And these people are worshipping idols. What do they say? They turn around to Musa and they say, Musa, make us idols like these people. We want idols. We want to worship idols. This was after just seeing Fir'aun being drowned. When Musa والسلام, went away for 40 days, what did they do? They made a calf out of gold and they, what did they say? This is a jeep. They say, this is your Lord and this is the Lord of Musa. You know, on every step, they showed arrogance. They showed arrogance. Even in the time of the Prophet وسلم, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, who will give Allah qarza hasana? Who will give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a good loan? The Jews of Medina turned around and they said, look, we're never going to worship your Lord because your Lord is faqir. They said, your Lord is a pauper. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Quran. That when that they say they refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as faqir in the Quran, the disrespect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as for believers, brothers and sisters, this is really, really important. As for believers, we have the utmost of respect for Allah and His Rasul. Allah and His Rasul are untouchable. There is no joking about with Allah and Rasul. So in the community in, in, uh, and the society we live in, you know, there is like freedom of speech and therefore freedom of speech infringes on or, or includes insulting Allah and His Rasul. For a believer, no. The most holiest thing is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is out of bounds for joking. The Prophet sallallahu is out of bounds for joking. And this is our heritage. This is our deen. We have tears of respect. Allah, His Rasul, our parents. We respect our parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La taqullahuma uffin. Don't even say uff to your parents. That's how much respect. We respect our elders. This is our heritage. And a nation should never lose adab. Because a nation who loses adab loses a great amount of their heritage. 
Look at the adab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and shows us in the Quran. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam says, الَّذِي خَلَقْنِي فَهُوَ يَحْدِينَ وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي وَيَسْقِينَ He says, the one who created me, he's the one who created me, he's the one who guided me, he's the one who feeds me, he's the one who gave me water. And then when it comes to negativity, he says, وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ and when I become unwell, he is the one who cures me. Look, everything positive in the verse created me, guided me, fed me, gave me drink. He attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the illness, he attributes to himself. And then the cure, he again attributes towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the story of Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam says, when he called on to his Lord and he said, Oh Allah, he said, Allah, I have been afflicted with a calamity. Wa anta, wa anta Look at the affliction of the calamity. He doesn't say, Oh Allah, you have afflicted me with this calamity. He said, I have been afflicted with this calamity. And then he turned around and he said, oh Allah, you are Arhamur Rahimin. You are the most merciful of all those who are merciful. Surah Al Jinn, look at SubhanAllah Adab. The, the, the believers from the jinn. Look at the adab they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah recalled in the Quran, Say that we do not know that is it evil that is intended with those in the earth? Or does Allah intend with them guidance? Look at it, subhanAllah. The, the, the evil is kept as a passive verb. Urida is evil intended. He doesn't say, does Allah intend evil with them? The word is that if uh, evil is intended, it's majhul, it's known in majhul in Arabic word, language. Am arada bihim rabbuhum rashada. Or does Allah, the Lord, attend, intend with them? Rashada, guidance. Here, because it's positive, then it is mentioned, or does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intend with them? Guidance. Positive, Allah is mentioned. Negative, Allah is not mentioned. This is the adab that the Anbiya had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that true believers had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Coming back to the story. So now they've been told that don't the, the Baqarah should not be too old, not too young. Well, that's not enough for them. They come back and they say, Qal udulana, rabbaka yubayyilana ma launuha. Musa, we want to know the color. Qala innahu yaqul. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ سَفْرَاعُ It's a, a yellow color. فَاقِئٌ لَوْنُهَا تَسُرُّ الْنَاثِرِينَ It's such a, 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 a yellow, a, 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 a sharp yellow, that when a person looks at it, it pleases them. Now, how many baqaras do you get which are yellow? Now they're getting concerned. Because they're now looking around for this Baqarah, they cannot find any Baqarah. And now they are getting very worried because now they've dug themselves into a ditch. And this is subhanAllah, a beautiful lesson here. Don't play games with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't play games with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because ultimately what Allah intends will happen. What Allah intends will happen, and this is a prime example of this, that they wanted to play games with Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. What happened? Ultimately now, they can't find the bakara, the cow that they meant to, a yellow one, mi middle age. And they come to back to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and they say, oh Musa, you know, now tell, ask your uh, Lord to explain me a bit more. Inna al-baqara tishaba alayna. Because all cows look the same to us. Wa inna insha'Allah la muhtadun. Wa inna insha'Allah la muhtadun. And they said, insha'Allah, then we will find it. If they had not said insha'Allah, they would have looked for it to the day of Qiyamah and they still would not have found it. Then Allah says, okay, here's another quality it must have. Qala innahu yaqul. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ لَا ظُلُولٌ تَثِيرُ الْعَرْضَ وَلَا تَسْقِ الْحَرْثَ That it is a cow which has never been trained to plow the land. 
So it's never plowed the land, never worked in the land, and never has they given water to the fields. Not just that, musallamatun. It is sound, la shiata fiha, and no blemish in it. قَالُوا الْآنَ جِئْتَ بِالْحَقِّ فَذَبَهُوهَا فَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ They said, now you, that, that eventually they find, that eventually they find it, and they said, now you have come with the truth. And they sacrifice it. And it was close that they may not have found it and they wouldn't have been able to slaughter the cow. Why? Because not only was it so difficult to find this, such a cow, yellow, young, never ever plowed the land. But what happened was when they said, Insha'Allah, Allah made a way for them. And the story behind this Baqarah is that there was a man, he was close to dying. And he had a young child and a wife. And he was worried that he had only thing left was a calf. And he was worried that the locals would take this beautiful calf. So what he did, he said he let it out in the, in the fields. And he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, oh Allah, this is the only thing I have for my children, for my child and my wife. And I am leaving it as a mana with you that once my child grows up, they will find it. And he lets it go. Child grows up and his mother says to him, you know, your father, he had a calf, a beautiful calf. He gave it a mana to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and look for it. He said, oh, my mother, how am I going to look for it? Where am I going to find it? No, it's going to be impossible. She said, Trust in Allah like your father trusted in Allah. He let it go with the name of Allah. You find it with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's exactly what he does. He looks for it and in a very short time he manages to find this cow. Unique. Now times come very hard on this young man and he's thinking about selling this for a meager price. And then all of a sudden you have the Bani Israel. They see the cow and now they want to buy it. So he was thinking about selling it for three dinar, you know, a cheap price. And he sees that how desperate they are. And his mother says to him, do not sell this cheap. Why? Because it had, you know, it had the sensitivity. It, it, had, it had values because it was from his father. So the Bani Israel now want to buy this cow. And he said, I'll sell you this cow. He said, how much? He said, you know, when you skin the cow, all the gold that can fit in the cow, that's what I want for the cow. So they go back to Musa والسلام, and they say, Oh Musa, this is what he's asking for it. We're going to be bankrupt. Musa والسلام, now tells them, he said, you were harsh upon yourself. So Allah made the matter harsh upon you. You were harsh upon yourself. Now Allah made the matter harsh upon you. You know, the message of Allah sallallahu said that the greatest criminal is he who asks a question about that thing which is halal and because he's questioning and questioning and questioning that is made haram because of his questioning. Leave it be. And these people wanted to mock Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. They wanted to be awkward so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it difficult for them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carries on here. What happens is that after they sacrifice it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them to take a bone. وَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا When you killed a, a person, an individual, فَدَرَأْتُمْ فِيهَا And then you disputed regarding وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take out that which you were hiding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, said to them that take a portion from the calf, from the cow. And then what you do is you take it and you strike. Yeah, you strike the deceased. And Allah says, كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِ اللَّهُ مَوْتَى And like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings back to life that who are dead. Why? يُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ so he shows you his signs, so you may begin to comprehend and you may have aqal and intellect. Now, they take the bone 
and they strike the deceased. The deceased stands up. Allah brings it back to life. And there's also a great, another great lesson in this, that for the mushrikeen who deny that Allah could bring back the dead, that look, Allah, the one who created in the first place, can create again. So the person gets up and he points towards his own family. His own nephews who had brought the case to Musa alayhi salatu they are the ones who killed me and then he dies again. Now, uh, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this, he was brought back to life to show that which you hid. Why did they kill him? Because he was a very rich individual who had no children. The nephews wanted to inherit, so they thought, if we kill him, then we will inherit. And this is the story of the story of Baqarah. And there's one more lesson I want to take from this, is that, you know, when the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come, and we find it difficult to accept the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, often it's due to the lack of our iman. The weakness of our iman. If the Bani Israel had said, Look, this is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's just sacrifice a Baqara. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu say that all Allah wanted them to do is slaughter any cow. That's it. No. But they firstly wanted to be awkward, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made things harsh for them. If a believer follows the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make the path easy for him. If a believer rejects the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turns away from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we learn from this story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may make life very difficult for that individual, for that believer. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to learn lessons from this story, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability that we live and die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we live like the Sahaba Radwan Allah Jma'een. In the Battle of Badr, the Prophet sallallahu wanted to ascertain, were the Ansar ready to go and fight? Because the Ansar's agreement with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu was that they would protect him while he is in Medina, not outside Medina. So the Prophet sallallahu asked the Ansar, he said, are you ready to fight? So Miqdad ibn al-Aswad stood up. And he said to the Prophet Sallallahu he said, oh, O Messenger of Allah, we will not say to you, like Bani Israel said to Musa, you and your Lord go and fight. We are sitting here. But we say to you, you and your Lord go and fight and we will fight with you. And this was the approach of the Sahaba Radwan Allah Jama'een. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make amongst those who accept the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we live by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we leave this dunya, that Allah is happy with us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to live in this dunya that we are united, our hearts are united, and Allah reunite us in Jannatul for those. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.